Hello, I'm Dustin Kruger with Kruger's Training Academy. Today I'm going to show you the possible failures you're going to encounter on a double check valve during an ABPA, AWWA, or similar exam. Everything here is based off ABPA, but it's largely the same. Any test you're taking is based on the USC. Uh, essentially what we have here, it's published by USC. It's the USC test fitting setup where they just hook up a bunch of needle valves and uh, T's and things. It's probably what you're going to see on the ABPA exam. Might not be exactly that way. Um, they, they could use copper pipe or something like that. This is just we, a setup we got from Bavco, but it's largely the one you're going to see on any of those types of exams. Uh, and essentially, in the USC book, there's a few diagnostics on what you do if certain things are failing that might require additional steps. And also, you might have failed check valves. So basically, there's a few different types of situations you're going to come across. If you look up the ABPA exam, uh, Operations and Procedures Manual, which I recommend everybody reads before they take the test, these are the possible conditions they're going to put the, D, the double check valve during a test. Leaky first, leaky second, leaky number one, leaky number two, or proper operating assembly. One thing to remember is quite a few of those diagnostics in the book, they have multiple failures. Say you have back pressure and check valve two leaks or something like that. It's not possible to simulate that during your test. You're not gonna come across that because simply the rule book says you're not. So there's only one failure per assembly. You're never gonna run into multiple failures. Uh, also, you run into where some of these are not possible, but with the double check valve, these test rigs, you can simulate everything that's in the USC book. So you might have a leaky number one, leaky number two, blah, blah, blah but you're only gonna come across those four conditions or proper operating assembly. And we wanna just go through quickly uh, so you guys can understand what you're gonna come across in the exam. It's either working or there's something failed. We're gonna go through all the possible conditions uh, for everything failed. So essentially for this test, obviously you flush your test cocks, put your bleed off T, put your short clear hose. We're using the Kruger Instruments TK2. It's a two valve kit. You might be using a five valve kit in your class um, but they, they are largely the same with the uh, double check. They're actually exactly the same procedures. This is just called your high bleed valve. The RP, it's a little different, but it's uh, largely the same. The same tips and the same failures exist. So essentially what you would do, open test cock two, open high bleed, close high bleed, open test cock three to fill, shut shut off two, shut inlet shut off. And then on a proper operating double check this drops down to the differential pressure relief valve di or di differential pressure across check valve one let's say they failed check valve one they open this one open that one and the water would keep running and drop to zero so one of the conditions you're going to come across i'll show you that again when you open that and you have you remember to keep it level with the top It'll, it'll just drop to zero. Leaky number one, check. Another one they can simulate is a leaking inlet shutoff. In which case, you open the first and the second one. And when you're doing this test and you have a leaky inlet shutoff, the water never stops coming out. So you're gonna end up with that. What you do is there's an additional step. You open this bleed off tee until there's no more than a drip. That's your differential pressure reading, 2.4. So those are the two conditions you might have for inlet, leaking inlet, leaking outlet, or leaking inlet or leaking check valve one. When you're doing the check valve two test, you can also run into a leaky check valve two. If you have a leaky inlet shut off, when you're doing check valve two, you actually end up with the same problem with the, uh, so if you have a leaky inlet shut off and that's the failure they put on it, what you're gonna see is the same problem when you're doing check valve two, where it keeps running and then you have to open this. One of the other possible situations you're gonna have when you're testing the double check is a leaky number two check valve. They just open this, open that.
If you're in this situation, when you close this, we'll open this, it'll drop to zero, similar to the inlet for, to the leaky number one check. So if this, is, if this is the fail you've encountered, everything's the same, there's no opening, no closing, no additional steps, you just read zero, say it's leaking. There also can be a leaky outlet shutoff under two circumstances. You can either have back pressure or direction of flow. If you're simulating back pressure, you open the first and the last T's. And this is simulating number two shutoff leaking against the back pressure. And what happens is you get here, you get there, you get to this step at the pit, to this step. You open this, the water keeps running, right? And then you're supposed to grab this reading. So 2.4, hold it in your head, and then you open this. But instead of this diverting the flow, it actually, you just drop to zero, and you record the previous reading as your differential pressure across check valve one. So important to remember that. That's why you always check that before you open this. Also in the USC book, it has where you're supposed to look at this same deal with check valve one when you're testing. But since you know they can't have multiple failures that you never run into that, that would be simulating a leaky check valve two and outlet shutoff against back pressure. Leaky shutoff against, or leaky shutoff with direction of flow. You open this one and this one. You will see water coming out the end if they're simulating this. But what you come across is, energize your gauge, fill this, close this. When you open test cock three, the pressure drops or the water level drops. The thing you have to do here, drop your test kit to the center of the assembly and you still get the same reading, 2.4, but the test kit has to be level with the center of the assembly, not the top of the hose. One of the diagnostics they go over is the location of the gauge it has to be level with the water level. So if your sight tube drains down, then you actually make it center of the assembly. So anyway, thank you for joining us. Those are the possible failures you're gonna come across doing a double check valve test for an ABPA or similar exam. And check out, we also have more resources on our website at Krugerstraining.academy.